Okay, somebody asked me if I would show again about the stamping of a background on a surface. So here I've just prepped an ATC and got it ready. All it is is a piece of chipboard. I base coated it with bleached sand, I believe it was. And then I've applied a thin coat of matte medium. I take the makeup wedge sponge, apply the paint to it, just dab, dab, dab all over the back of the stamp. And then I like to stamp at a little bit of an angle versus straight across. And there's my stamped background. Just that simple. So here's one where I have already started the holly leaves on it. And I was asked if I would show a little bit about what I do to them. So these have just been base coated with a lighter green shade using kind of a, a wash to do it rather than full strength paint. And then because we want to set that top leaf on top of this leaf, we're going to... Put the shadow there on that one and then come in here and put the shadow here on this leaf. Then I like to give my leaves just a little bit of movement by how I do the, the vein in them. So instead of straight down making the, the stroke I like to give it a little bit of a curve because if you notice holly leaves on an actual holly tree, because of the way the leaf grows, it doesn't ever look flat. It always looks like it has that little bit of curve to it. So that's just my way of, of doing it for a little bit of realism, I guess. So the berries need just a touch more color. And so I'm basically just going to give them another wash, oops, a little globby, of the red, which is actually two different reds mixed together. So we'll let that one sit to the side a minute and dry. This is one where I have prepped the background with just a piece of songbook page and basically done the same thing to it. I adhered the songbook page using the matte medium, and then I put a coat of the matte medium over the top of the songbook page paper so that it gives me a little more workable time and doesn't, doesn't allow my paper to peel up like it would if I was just working straight off the paper. Which, if you're real, real careful, sometimes you can get some pretty good work time, even if you don't put the matte medium, but I've just got to where I use it. So here we'll do the, the vein, kind of a little bit of a curve. And to get the holly leaves on there, we'll let that one dry a second. I've got a, a light background here just so that you could tell what I had done. I just take a pencil, sketch off where I want the leaves, the berries to be. And then what I do is I go back and I erase the harshness of those lines to make them somewhat lighter so I can still see them, but yet they're easier to cover up once you start applying your paint to your piece. And then you don't have to worry about seeing those lines so bad. Whenever I shade the berries, I just generally brush mix a little bit of my red color that I base coat with along with some black in it. That's just how I was taught to mix my red for shading. So that's kind of what I still do is 
is just brush mix those colors and I just like the look that it gives I like the color that it creates within the the shaded berry so that's what I do and I never do them all the same I kind of like to as I call it mix and match them and make them all look a little bit different so that would be the the berries for there and I forgot to squirt out my lighter paint I was using citron I think it is when I watched that Priscilla Hauser video the other day she had used this color to highlight some leaves in what she was painting and I realized I had that color so I thought well I will use it and I just like it it's a pretty yellowy green color and I like the little pop that it creates on the side of my holly leaves so that's what they will get a little highlight of is that and I just side load it onto the brush and of course I'm using this same scruffy old quarter inch angle brush seems like I paint everything I pick up with this brush or use it in some kind of way to paint with put a little bit there and put a little bit there and then I just go back with a light side load of white and give my berries a little call it a kind of a half C stroke highlight of white. I'll get that a little bolder so you can see it a little better. And let's see. This one we'll put it there. And we'll put some there. And then some there. And I just move the color around till it looks like I want it to look. Then we will take a touch of that same, I call it my red and black mixture. I don't like to use straight black. I like that little bit of red in there. And I just do a little, oops, wrong side of the berry, a little thing at the bottom that looks like the little end. I do it in the dark shadowed area, I should say. That doesn't necessarily always mean it's at the bottom because sometimes I turn them upside down. But anyway, that's the gist of getting it on there. Then I take a, I love this color called, I think it's called dark, what is it called? Dark chocolate. I like that shade of brown. It's a little different than a burnt umber. And then I like to go back and kind of give a wash I call it like a side loaded wash of that color around my holly leaves and berries these ATCs will end up being for a swap so that's kind of good I'll be ahead of the game when I actually need them done but I want to show you, I was trying to get this one done really quick so I could show you one other little thing. And if you needed to add any more foo-foo to that, you can. But I want to show you how to take a Sharpie marker and add some very simple, easy detail to the edges of your ATCs. Normally, that's what they would look like if you don't carry your paint over the edge, which I don't like doing. So what I like to do is take a Sharpie marker, so I've already done that edge, and see the black, and run that marker just along that flat cut edge. And what it does, it just gives a finished look to your, your ATC. If you wanted to bring that color just over the edge, you would hold the marker at a little bit of an angle and just drag it ever so slowly and let it kind of round that edge and because you've painted that or base coated it with paint it actually makes it look 
it almost gives it a framed finished effect like you know straightening up the the bottom edge of a hem in a dress or something okay on this one this is a I think the color is called bronze same thing I, it doesn't have the wide tip it was one for writing but you just hold the, the marker so that the side of it runs that edge and then it colors it and takes away that raw or unfinished look and same thing if you want this color to round that edge just drag that marker kind of at an angle and it just does put a thin line of that color. And that's all you want. And then it gives that finished look to that piece. And then, of course, on this particular one here, I would go back and I would do that shading all around that. I can't seem to keep my pinky finger out of the, the green paint. I would do that shading all around my holly leaf and berries. And then if I wanted to, let me see if I can find my gold paint right quick. If I want to give just a tad more of a dressed look, there's not much paint left in that, either that or it's really, really thick, to this one on the songbook page background. I wish I knew where my other gold paint was. I do not see the bottle here anywhere. Okay, we'll try this and see if it works. Yeah, that's going to show up good. You can give that cracked effect. Instead of doing it over your whole piece, just kind of do some random stamped sections and then it still lets your artwork kind of pop and then the rest of it just has that that little bit of, of breakup of such stark color and then you can add your spattering just to give it a little a little more pop I'll do the spattering on this one so you can see it a little better and then once I finish floating the, the leaves and, and all on that one, that one will basically be done. So I hope that helps.